guys, my name is Megan, for those of you who don't know, and um, I have had the privilege, I've been blessed to be able to go to Disney World several times, and I figured, uh, why not share my knowledge um, with others who um, maybe haven't gone yet, or they're thinking about going, or um, just to, to share my tips and tricks of like how to have the best experience and um, how to make the most out of your Disney vacation. So I'm going to be talking about several things in this video and um, if you see me looking down at my phone I have all my points uh, listed in my notes on my phone. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull that up and we'll go ahead and get started. So. If you are one of those people who wants to learn about how to have a great experience at Disney World, then keep on watching. Okay, so my first point that I would like to make is that I'm talking about Disney World, not Disneyland. Now, for those of you who don't know uh, the difference, Disneyland is located in Anaheim, California, and Disney World is located in Orlando, Florida. Disney World consists of four different parks. Um, Disneyland is just the one park. Now, I have been to Disneyland a few times when I was little, but um, for purposes of this video, I've been to Disney World a lot more than I've been to Disneyland, so um, my tips are gonna be based off of my experiences at Disney World. Um, some of these general tips like packing and what to bring and that kind of stuff um, you could use at Disneyland as well but some things like um, prices and what the best food is I don't know if they'd have you know the same restaurant at Disneyland or if things are priced the same so just keep that in mind I just wanted to throw that out there because I don't want anyone to be like Oh, well, you said this, and I showed up at Disneyland, and it's not like that. No, I'm not talking about Disneyland. I'm talking about Disney World. So, um, that's the first point I wanted to make. And I also would like to make a point. I have um, pet birds in a cage behind me over there. They're not showing on camera. But if you hear a little, little tweeting, um, <laughs> that's what that is. Moving on to uh, my next point, I'm going to be talking about how many days at each park and which park, like what, what is each park like? So Disney World, if you don't know this already, um, consists of four parks. There's Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios, which um, used to be called MGM. So if you're still thinking, I thought there was MGM, they changed it to Hollywood. I think it was due to like a, copyright laws or something so magic kingdom is my favorite park if i can only go to one park i go to magic kingdom i feel like magic kingdom is like there's the most stuff to see there the most things to do the most rides it's like if you're a pure true disney junkie who's like grown up on you know cinderella and peter pan and winnie the pooh and you know, Beauty and the Beast and all those classic Disney films and you want to see some of that stuff in real life, Magic Kingdom is for you. That's my recommendation and that's that's the park that has the castle, of course. It's, um, I believe, I always get this mixed up, but I believe Disney World has Cinderella Castle and Disneyland has Sleeping Beauty Castle. Because the two castles are different. But anyways, um, that is like my number one favorite park of all time. Okay, so that's Magic Kingdom. And then we have Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom is a very cool park. It's like, kind of like a zoo safari type of thing. But it's Disney themed. So you've got like all these like animals it's like a learning experience where you can learn about different animals and it's like educational but it's disney themed so if 
Um, if you're wanting like lots of rides and Disney stuff, I don't recommend Animal Kingdom as much, but don't get me wrong, it was really cool. There was like a show with like, kind of like circus performers and doing like acrobatic stuff. And there was like, there's a lot of like, there's like some Lion King themed stuff and there's a few cool characters and um, there's a lot of cool stuff. And so um, that is a very cool park. But if you're really like a Disney junkie wanting to experience, you know, Disney in real life, that's no, you're not going to get as much of that in this park. So next I will talk about Hollywood. So um, Hollywood is like movies in real life. It's like a whole like movie park as the title might imply. Um, it's like movies and um, so there's like Star Wars stuff there. They had a Star Wars themed fireworks show last time that I went which was amazing. Like I can't even explain like it was synced up with music and sound effects and they had the speakers rigged up so like you could hear Darth Vader breathing and like it moved, I don't even know how to explain it, like it moved through the speaker system so you felt like he was walking past you. It was like scary and creepy and amazing and it was just so cool. So there's a lot of like movie type things there. Um, there's not as much rides, but it's really cool. There's like kind of like old school kind of diners and that kind of thing. So that's a very cool park, um, but again, I don't remember there being like a whole lot of like Disney like stuff. It was based on um, a lot of different movies. Like there was a Muppet show thing where it was like, I forget what they call it, but like you're sitting there and the action like comes at you like, you get sprayed with a little bit of water, you smell things, you feel wind. It was really cool. And then the last park is Epcot. Now it's been quite a while since I've been there, but it has a lot of cool stuff. Um, so I'm, last time I was there, it was like 2003 or two, I think. So it has probably changed since then. I know they've added a Frozen ride. They've taken out the Viking like Maelstrom ride and changed it to a Frozen ride. But um, there are a lot of cool things there. They've got it set up like um, different parts of the world. There's like you can go to like the Mexico part of the park or there's like Japan and there's like China and all that kind of stuff. So you can like, if you're into like, different types of food from different parts of the world like you can pick oh let's have Mexican food for lunch and then let's go to France and have that kind of food for dinner so it's really kind of cool to like experience like the culture of different parts that that's kind of what the four parks are what they're like and so that brings me to my next point of like how many days should you spend at each park because there's a lot of different with the tickets you can get like just a one day pass for one park. You can get like a four day pass and you can pick any one one day at any one of the four parks. Or you can go to one park twice and then the other two days at two different parks. Um, there's also like the park hopper, which allows you to go hop between parks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So how many days at each park? You might be wondering. Is one day at each park enough? Do I need two days at any of the parks? So, my advice, um, definitely, I feel like Magic Kingdom, if any day, if any park needs two days, if you should spend two days at any of the parks, it's Magic Kingdom, because there's so much to see, and so much to do, and to like, to really experience everything in depth, you need to go two days. I mean... I'm like a true Disney junkie, so I could even still have fun if I went three days, frankly. Um, I would never, and I mean never, get tired of Disney World, like Magic Kingdom particularly. 
So I would definitely suggest two days at Magic Kingdom. But, you know, this depends too on you. This is just my experience and like my feelings. Some people feel like, oh, I didn't see very many Disney movies. I might just do one day at Magic Kingdom. And then I feel like I've seen it and I'm fine. Whereas I'm more into all the like Star Wars and I would rather be at Hollywood for two days and experience, you know? You do you. I'm just, this is from my experience. I feel like I definitely would always pick two days at Magic Kingdom. I felt like you definitely only need one day at Animal Kingdom because there's not as much to do and see there. I feel like you can you can hit it all in one day there. Um, Epcot, I do remember spending two days at Epcot when I was there before. So there's a lot to see with the different lands and different cultures and stuff. So that would also be a good one for, for spending two days. And then Hollywood, I felt like we spent one day last time and I felt like that was good um, for me that worked one day was fine so so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what the parks are like and how long you should spend at each one all right moving on to our next point is beating the heat now again this depends on you and what time of year that you go to the park um, I've usually gone in the summer because my family's homeschool um, science supply business, we did the homeschool conventions, and so we were always in Florida for the convention uh, in May. Um, so I'm speaking from my experiences with being there in the summer. So um, if you're there in the summer, definitely you need to bring cool clothes, like shorts and t-shirts and tank tops and that kind of thing. And one thing that I found is very helpful is to get little like pocket fans, especially the kind that have water in them that you can like spray with water. That is very helpful to help you beat the heat. Um, bring water bottles, stay hydrated, um, you know, drink all the time. You need to be drinking because it gets very, very hot there and you can easily get dehydrated. But also within the parks, they have different little areas where they have things that spray you with water. Like uh, in Tomorrowland, there's like kind of like a car wash type thing and it's got misters in there that spray you. Animal Kingdom has these kind of like little tiki statues that mist you a little bit. There's, there's things, oh, also in um, uh, Adventureland in um, Magic Kingdom, there is a camel right outside the um, Aladdin's Magic Carpets. There's a camel that spits on you. So they definitely have all that in mind and, um, and they have spots within there where you can get, you can get a little bit of extra cooling off. Another, Thing I would advise definitely if you're getting too hot and you're feeling like I just need to cool down just go chill inside a gift shop for a little bit they always like everywhere inside that you go they just blast the AC in there so just go sit inside go sit in a show go go to the gift shop just take a minute and just chill down don't just feel like you have to just keep going you know take a minute and just sit down and drink you know so um hopefully those tips will kind of help you um with figuring out what to do for that so um now i'm going to be talking about what to bring and kind of how to pack so I already talked about with clothes, you know, bring cool clothes. If you're in the summer, like bring cool clothes. And then like how to pack and what to bring like within the parks. Um, Cause you don't want to be carrying a lot of stuff. So I would suggest like what I did, I didn't even bring a purse. I just brought like a tote bag with stuff that I needed. It was easier to carry. And I just took like my wallet and my money out of my purse and 
um, put it in like a tote bag thing. I would also suggest something like this. This backpack I found at Goodwill for like $3, but it's got like lots of, there's like one big pouch. There's like a little pouch here. You could fit like a wallet. You could fit like your like chapstick or sunscreen. You can fit a lot of like little things in here that you might need throughout the day. And you might even be able to carry a couple little things for your friends in here so that they don't have to carry as much. So um, definitely something like this because it's just easier to walk with this on your shoulders and you don't have to like worry about like carrying a lot of things like in your hands. And another thing I would suggest bringing is this, the Hidden Mickey's book. So this is Field Guide to Walt Disney World's Best Kept Secrets. So this has, um, if you don't know what Hidden Mickey's are, they have like little M Mickey shapes, like just like the Mickey Mouse head, like the head with the two ears, hidden throughout the park whether it be on rides or maybe engraved on a bench somewhere. Um, and this book has a guide for how to find them. And so um, it has, you can do like a scavenger hunt where it literally has steps where you go here and then go here. I didn't want to like actually do the scavenger hunt. I just looked through and found like where it said Mickey's were like it doesn't tell you like exactly where the Mickey is but it'll give you like hey on the Peter Pan ride when you're going this way look over there and you'll see one you know it's not exact but it gives you like the general area and that's just fun I didn't go like overboard to where I bored everyone else in my party I just you know it's, it's a little fun to kind of find some of these. I even found a hidden Donald Duck. They're not all Mickey. Some of them, some of them are different characters, but um, this is definitely a really fun. And I bought this on Amazon and the price on the back says $13.95. I don't remember, I guess that's what I paid for it. Um, but yeah, this is definitely really fun. And again, this is for Disney World. If you're going to Disneyland in Anaheim, um, you will definitely need to look for the one for Disneyland. This is for Disney World, so I don't know if these Mickeys apply to Disneyland um, or not. So, okay, so food. I'm gonna be talking about food, restaurants, and snacks. So, it used to be that you were not allowed to bring food into the parks, but I believe you are now. So what we like to do is bring lunch like sandwiches just something that's easy to carry and not like messy you know um just like something simple and we like to just bring that to eat for lunch and then buy dinner because it is really fun to eat dinner like to eat food in the parks because there's some good food in there um it can be a little pricey so just um warning you there that's why we eat lunch and buy dinner. But there are several good restaurants within the parks. Magic Kingdom has near the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, there is a Mexican place that is really good. There's also in Frontierland, I believe, there is Pecos Bill Burgers, which is pretty good. Um, my favorite was the Mexican food because I just, I love Mexican food. Um, and now they have in Fantasyland, they have the Be Our Guest restaurant, which looks amazing I haven't been in there if you have to get a reservation and it's probably like really expensive but it's decorated inside to look like the ballroom from Beauty and the Beast and in the winter they even have projections of like snow falling on the windows so it looks like you're snowing in there and sometimes like Belle and the Beast and everything they'll come and visit you at your table while you're eating so that's another restaurant that's inside the park um, so definitely it is fun to get food in the parks. Now, snacks. I do wanna talk about snacks. They have, besides the actual like restaurants, they have little like snack carts. Now, you do wanna bring extra money for snacks. They are a little bit more expensive than your average, you know, like their ice cream, they have ice cream sandwiches. It's like five, four or $5 for the ice cream sandwich, but 
hey, come on, it's Mickey shaped, you know? You can't miss out on that. And they have, I got last time an Oreo ice cream sandwich that was Mickey shaped and it was like cookies and cream ice cream. And then I also got Olaf frozen strawberry lemonade bar, which was really good. So you definitely, they've got those, they've got like frozen lemonade, both like a drinkable, like a slushy and both a, like a firm, like an edible with a spoon type of thing. And so those are definitely good um, as another source of beating the heat. Um, and they're just a fun summer treat. So definitely, I budgeted like an extra $5 a day for the snacks. Cause my mom was paying for my meals, but I paid for my own tickets. I paid for snacks. So I planned on like one treat per day because um, they're expensive, but they're definitely really yummy. And the frozen lemonade, like the the firm one that you eat, was big enough. My mom and I were able to share it. So yeah, and also that helps if you get a little motion sick on rides. It can help to get like a little ice cream or a like a lemonade to eat afterwards. That can definitely help your stomach a little bit if you tend to get motion sick on rides. So that's definitely another tip that I would have there. All right, so the next point I want to discuss is souvenirs and shopping money and how to best utilize the money you've brought for spending. So Disney merch, I guess, souvenirs, within the parks is pretty expensive. So um, my tip would be first and foremost, look at uh, Orlando Walmart. They have a lot of cute Disney things that um, are a lot cheaper than they are in the parks. My mom got a Tinkerbell keychain. You'd never know she didn't buy that at Disney World. It looks like it came from Disney World but she bought it at Walmart. She found a tote bag in the Disney parks that she wanted, it had Snow White on it. She found like the same one at Walmart for a fraction of the cost. She paid like 10 bucks and it was like 30 or 40 within the park. So definitely before you plunk all your money down to buy something in the parks, make sure they don't have something similar at Orlando Walmart that, um, you could just buy there. Now again, Disneyland in Anaheim, I don't know if they have Disney merch at Walmart there. This is just, Orlando is very um, touristy and Disney like is in like the heart of Orlando and so they're, they have a lot of Disney merch at the Walmart. They even have t-shirts for like, I got one for like $12 and I know it would have been probably at least, at least 20 or 25 within the parks. So, um, now there are times when it's good to spend in the Disney parks. There are things that it's okay to just spend a little extra and treat yourself within the park. So I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be showing you some of the things that I got from Disney parks and telling you how much I spent on them just to give you an idea. I feel like in order to buy something decent, you probably need to bring with you at least $50. Um, that may seem a little bit, whoa, really 50? Well, I, like I said, I'm gonna show you some of the things I bought to give you an idea. So now the first thing I have with me is this dress. And this is from Animal Kingdom. It's a halter dress. I just have this tied in a bow because I wore it to church with like a cardigan over the top and I thought the halter would look weird so I just tied it like that and tucked the bow inside. But it's really pretty. I didn't actually pay for this. My mom bought it for me. Thank you, mom. And it was at Animal Kingdom, of course, because it's leopard print. And it was like $30, which might seem a little high, but stuff like this, that even at Kohl's is gonna be 30 you know and it is hand wash um, but it's really pretty and it's really comfortable and I wore it in the parks um, 
I wore it at Magic Kingdom, I believe, and it helped with the heat. So it's about like a knee length dress for me, maybe a little longer. So there's that. And then I have some jewelry that I've bought. Now, these two, I'm not sure it was quite a while ago that I bought these when I was like younger, so I'm not entirely sure how much I um, would have spent on them. But I think they were between five and ten dollars. This one has Mickey characters on it, and this one has Pooh Bear characters on it. So here's all the little Pooh guys. And so there's those. And then this is something that I really like. They have little kiosks where you can build your own um, charm bracelet. You can pick out the bracelet, which by the way, um, another uh, spending hack here. I bought this at a bookstore and it was like 350 and bracelets are quite a bit more than this in the parks. So, um, this is just like your basic bracelet and when you can pick from all these charms, they are $3.50 a piece, if I remember correctly. And you can just, they have like a the little like, um, I don't know if you can see, a little lobster claw. So you can hook them on like wherever you want. And then, so I've got Piglet, I have Tinkerbell, Olaf, I have Donald, I have an Animal Kingdom one, I have a letter M for my name, um, Cookies and Milk, Pooh Bear, um, a little Minnie Mouse hand with a bow and the castle. So this is like a fun thing to like just collect. Every time you go you can get another one and it's not that expensive. And this is just a bag from a jeweler, jeweler store so I just keep them in there. Um, so those are some of the things. Um, that I bought. And now another thing I love to collect in the parks that again is not that expensive. They're like four four dollars, $4.99 maybe. They look kind of like a package of gummy fruit snacks and they're like they're called like Disney Parks Collector Series and it's these little figurines. So here's like Minnie Mouse. Um I've got Mickey Mouse here and show you that. I got Tinkerbell. So you get a pack, you get three in there. And they used to let you trade like whichever ones you wanted, but now you're only allowed to trade like one, which I think is kind of lame. Here's like Robin Hood. Um, here's Pluto. And here's, I really love this one. It's the Haunted Mansion ride. It's a little Haunted Mansion. So yeah, I've got those, and then I've got a little Mater car, I've got like Jedi Mickey, and I've got um, Wookie, a little um, Chewy. So yeah, those are really fun, it's like $5 or something for a pack of three. Now you can go on eBay and find other ones, but they can be pretty expensive on eBay, especially if they're like rare, like the little Thunder Mountain Railroad car. Um, it's so cute, like I want it, but it's like 20 bucks, so no. Um, another thing, this is one of my favorite things that I got, little piglet. Um, for those of you who don't know, I love piglet, okay? Piglet is bae. Like, Piglet is my favorite Disney character of all time. I feel like he's so, like, underappreciated. Like, I feel like I relate to Piglet, honestly, because, like, he's small and little, but he can do big things, and he can he can be the hero, and he can come in and, and do things that just save everyone's day, and, um, you know, I mean, I, I just, I just feel like it's like encouraging to someone like me, like I'm little and I might feel like helpless at times or whatever, but you know, I feel like I, I relate to him a little bit. So he's my favorite and 
this was at a store in Disney Marketplace, but they have a lot of the same merch at a lot of different stores. So that's another tip is if you see something at one store and you don't get it, and then later you're like, oh, I wish I'd gotten that. You can probably find it at another store in another park. Don't worry. Um, so this was expensive. I paid $18 for this. I was kind of like, what am I doing? I'm paying $18, but it was worth it. You know, it, it, was, it was worth it. I didn't buy myself that much, so I bought this and he's all soft. And I just love him. He's just... Cute, so um yeah definitely this was definitely worth it and then one other thing that I have collected over a few years this was not within the Disney parks this was in um, Disney marketplace which is another place that just has lots of different stores and food and it's really fun to go there. Um, I collected Mr. Potato Head. They have a toy store there that has Mr. Potato Head and it's all Disney themed. So, um, here we have the uh, Spud Trooper and he's got a potato masher instead of a laser gun. And then, there's just other really fun things that it came with, like there's like little Peter Pan shoes and there's like um, Tinkerbell hair and there's little like wings you can hook onto the arms. So these are really, really fun. It was, and again, price may have gone up since I bought these, but it was $18 for a box that was probably this big. And it was however much you could get in there. However much you could fit in the potato, because like the, it's back, like opens and you can put pieces in there. However much you could get in the potato, put him in the box, and then however much you could get in the box. So my tip for getting the most bang for your buck there, don't buy the potato. Go to Walmart later and get the potato. Just, no, don't buy the potato at Disney. Save all the room for all the Disney pieces. Now my dad was really good at fitting like everything in the box. So he'd school other people like, hey, you know, you can fit more in here. You know, he'd be helping other people pack their box. So, um, my recommendation is just try to fit as much as you can and if you notice like little like air pockets just fit little there's little tiny pieces there's always room for like another little earring or another pair of eyes um, and one thing I will say that we messed up on the first time we didn't get arms because we thought oh we can get arms at, you know the potatoes at Walmart will come with arms no, you need to get the arms because these arms are specially built to hold the little items, like the pizza. Whereas the normal arms are just like this and they can't hold the stuff. So we had to go back and get arms. So make sure you buy the arms because they are required to hold all the stuff. So um, that's another fun souvenir that I bought. And then another thing I bought that I wanted to show y'all but I can't find it is a pair of earrings. And it is, they are rhinestone, um, I think it's like April or something. Cause they have them for the different months with the different birthstones. But I just wanted basic white rhinestones so I got whatever birthstone has that. I feel like it was April or May. And it's just little Mickey, you know, the head and the two ears. And um, they were like $12, I think, for that. So um, hopefully this, some of this will help you out because I just wanted to give you an idea of like how much money you'd be spending. Um, so yeah, and this hoodie, I did not get this from the Disney parks. It came from uh, 
my neighbor gave it to me for Valentine's Day and she found it at Walmart. I don't know how much she spent on it, but something like this would probably be 30 or 40 within the park. So, um, nothing wrong with getting a hoodie like this. Just see if you can find it cheaper somewhere else before you plunk your money down. So, yeah. And moving on to our next point, I'm going to talk about, um, I actually already talked about this, what to wear. I kind of talked with that and beating the heat. Um, but I will go into shoes. Um, unless you have like feet of steel, don't wear flip flops. Your feet are gonna be killing you by the end of the day. I fail. Like I will never understand these girls that just wear flip flops around the park. Like, come on, aren't your feet gonna be like killing you by the end of the day? Get like, you don't have to get like Nikes or anything like that. I just bought like some nice sandals. They're maybe like $30 at Famous Footwear. And just something comfortable that you're gonna be able to walk in. You need like good walking shoes, like uh, Converse or some kind of tennis shoes. Um, it doesn't have to be some athletic shoe that might not be all that, you know, fancy or fun looking. Um, but you need to wear something, not just flip flops, don't wear like, wear good quality sandals. Don't, and God forbid, don't wear like heels. I'm pretty sure I've seen women in heels before at Disney. Just, just don't, okay? Just don't. That's like an accident waiting to happen. You could fall and twist your ankle. Just, you're gonna hurt your feet. Definitely wear comfy shoes. Um... If you know, if you put on your shoes and think, oh, I really want to wear this because it looks really cute with my outfit, but I have a feeling it's going to hurt. If you have a feeling it's going to be uncomfortable, don't wear it. Just don't. You'll be miserable. So my next point is what to do if you get lost. Now, I grew up in a day and age where we didn't have cell phones and that kind of thing. So if I got lost it was like there's no way to tell my family where I am so we always learned my parents always taught us if you get lost stay where you are because we're already looking for you so if you start looking for us like we're never gonna find each other so that's not as important in this day and age when we have cell phones unless of course you've got like a little kid who's not old enough to have a cell phone, then yeah, they need to learn stay where you are and we'll come find you. Um, but in this day and age, of course, I could just text my mom, hey, I don't know where you are, I'm by the teacups, or whatever, you know? So, um, another good tip is to pick like a meeting place. If we get lost, meet up here. So that's, that's a good tip, although, I mean, you want to pick like a central location because you don't want your party to be walking like all the way across the park to get to the meeting spot. So you can pick somewhere like the castle, which is like centrally located, you know, and something like that. So that's definitely important to make sure you don't get lost. And if you do, you know, just text, text your mom or whoever say, hey, where are you? I'm... I, I'm at the Dumbo ride or whatever. And one thing I will say at the end of the fireworks show, it is chaos, okay? So what we always do, we go in the big emporium to shop at the end. We just hold hands in a long line until we get there because it'd be so easy to get separated. So that's another tip I would have. Even just stay seated for a while and let most of the crowd just move away before you even get up, so. All right, my next tip is um, photographers versus your own camera. What are the benefits? What are the pros and cons? So now it's, we're in, we live in a digital age, okay? So um, it used to be, the tickets would be like little paper tickets. Well, now they're kind of like a credit card looking thing, almost like at arcades now, you get the little card and it gets your tickets on the card, which by the way, I think is no fun because 
who doesn't love a long string of tickets? But anyway, um, that's kind of how it is now. And like you scan your ticket to get in the park and whatever. So now um, there are photographers um, when you go to meet a character or you're just throughout the park. There was a photographer by the castle. They'll take your picture and then they can scan your card and your pictures will be on there and you can download, it's like my Disney experience or something, it's an app. And you can download, you can see your photos on there. And you can order them, they're a little bit pricey, it's like $14.99 for like a photo or maybe two. So you are totally allowed to bring your own camera and ask the photographer to take a picture for you on your camera it's that's totally fine it's just nice to have peace of mind knowing there are photographers there if you're just like you know what I've saved up the money it's fine camera is one less thing to have to carry you know then that's fine but of course we all have our phones in this day and age and it's just easy to whip that out and take a picture because you're gonna have it with you anyway so you do you um just be warned you have to pay money to purchase the photos um, if you use a photographer. So we always just bring our own cameras. We did have a photographer take a couple pictures of us just because like my mom and I were by ourselves at one point and we needed, hey, can you get a picture of us? Why we didn't just hand him our camera, I don't know. Um, and we looked at maybe getting it, but we decided not to. So, um, those are just the tips I have there for um, helping with photos and knowing knowing what to do there. Um, next thing I'm going to talk about is meeting characters. Now, you might be wondering, is it worth my time to meet a character? You know what? I like to meet the characters, but sometimes there are really long lines, and it's not always worth it. Now. I'm going to be talking about the few characters that I've met that I thought were definitely worth it. Um, at Animal Kingdom, my mom and I waited in line for not that long to meet Baloo the Bear and King Louie, and that was worth it because they gave us big hugs, and um, King Louie gave mom a double high five, and it was really fun. So that was definitely worth it. Um, in Magic Kingdom, we met Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. And I know you might be thinking, really, Gaston? And honestly, that's kind of what I thought. But I was like, you know what? This might be pretty cool. So I waited in line with my mom for 45 minutes. It was so worth it. If you have the opportunity to meet Gaston, do it. Trust me. You gotta do it. We were in the tavern and we realized he was outside meeting people. And we're like, okay, let's do it. And I was kind of like, what am I doing? I'm really gonna wait 45 minutes in the heat for Gaston. But it was so worth it. Like, he, he was like, I've never seen anybody who's like so arrogant, but still so nice. Like he was leaving cause he had to leave and go take like a five minute break to get some water or whatever. He kept character the whole time. He was like, I'll, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. It'll be worth the wait. And like he asked mom and I to pick what we liked about him. And she said she liked his muscles and I complimented his tavern, um, which is really cool by the way. It's It's got the chandelier made out of deer antlers. It was pretty cool in there and they've got his big chair you gotta go in the tavern okay so uh, plus they have good food in there um so yeah and then he'll say stuff to you like is nice to meet me it says nice to meet you so he is definitely worth meeting i feel like it's more worth meeting characters that aren't in like a full costume that can actually talk to you you know with the exception of course of King Louie and Blue the Bear because they were really fun anyways but um yeah so those are just a few of the characters I met because personally I don't want to spend like all day waiting in line for characters um because that takes up a lot of time but if the wait is short go for it 
Um, another character that I've never met, but I've seen videos on YouTube of people that have met him is Peter Pan. And particularly, I believe it's in Disneyland. He like plays hide and seek and duck duck goose with the kids and he seems like so much fun and so sweet. Um, I haven't seen him at Disney World. I've only seen him in the parades. But if you get a chance to meet Peter, from what I've seen, he just seems really sweet and really fun to talk to. Um, so those are all my advice on meeting up with characters. Now one other thing I want to talk about is handicap passes and fast passes. Now this won't apply to everyone, obviously, but for those of you who don't know, I have a heart problem. I'm not going to go into a ton of details. Um, because that would be a different video for a different day, but basically I have a pacemaker and um, basically what that does is it regulates my heartbeat because my heart beats very slowly without it. So it is a lifesaver, thank you God for pacemakers. Um, but as a result of the heart stuff, I'm more like prone to getting like heat stroke. I'm more sensitive to getting overheated and stuff. So I get tired more easily too. So I always get handicap passes because they let me, they allow me to not have to wait as long and stuff. Now things have changed. It used to be that I could just go on the exit, like go in the exit of the ride or they have a handicap entrance. Now they just give you like a, a time that you can come back. So you'll be able to get right on the ride. Um, which is still very helpful because I can't handle standing in long lines in the heat. Um, Fast Pass kind of does the same thing. You pick a time to come back when there's not gonna be a line, a long line for the ride. Cause it just like bugs me. Like people will stand in line for two hours to wait to get on the ride. And I'm like, really? And I know, I think handicap passes can even help with characters. I was able to jump to the front of the line once when I was younger to meet Geppetto. And the employee didn't tell what was wrong with me because frankly, I don't think she knew. But she just told Geppetto, we have a special guest. And like, he gave me a hug and I got my picture with him and everything. So those are definitely um, very, very helpful. And, um, I know there are people out there who are worse off than me physically, but um, it really helps because I have nearly gotten heat stroke before and it's very helpful just to be able to get on rides quicker and not have to wait uh, in long lines. So that is it for this video. I hope that um, you guys found it helpful. And I hope this helped you prepare for your Disney trip, whether you're a newcomer or you are, you've been before. Um, I hope I was able to help you. Um, if anyone, if you have any questions or any concerns or anything that I did not cover in this video, um, please feel free to comment below and I will respond to your comments and answer any questions you might have. So um, that is it for this video and I wish you good luck and happiest of times on your next Disney vacation. Bye. <laughs>